sportsman, and I want to tell you why I think inflatables are the future of kayak fishing. This is the innovative Sportsman Osprey 1443. It is our fourth prototype. Uh, we've made a three-chambered inflatable that allows you to go shallow. It has good speed. It's, it's very stable. And we've created it so that it is riggable from bow to stern. We've got track that runs almost the whole length of the kayak. And of course, you can see we have the motor on the back switch pad on the front for your anchor and uh, we're just trying to create a, a new breed of inflatable kayak that is you can accessorize it however you want so we're running along the shoreline here fishing shallow wood and trying to get up into these, some of these back creeks and the little ponds and everything and I pulled the motor up and we're able to run really shallow we're like sub four inches here and this kayak is fully rigged and we're, we're able to get into these areas without getting out and dragging it through and it just takes less time. You can get in there a little bit quieter and then you can access those areas that are sometimes harder to reach. Little snake head. So caught a little snake head up here in this <laughs> little back bay. He's slimy. And I don't have my fish grips and look, he's gonna let himself go. <laughs> Alright, buddy. So with the name we've come up with, we uh, we try to use inspiration from nature and the osprey is it's a predatory bird and it's a really dominant bird in this area so it, it just it kind of fits the bill and uh it's a beautiful creature and, and it just like we we just wanted it to be inspired by something that inspires us to get out here and enjoy nature so with the inflatable you have a a gas filled hull or air filled which is different than a plastic hull that is hollow one if you hit it you don't get an echo or a loud thud like you would uh, with a plastic filled or with a plastic hollow hull um, the other thing is is your primary stability on this kayak is a lot better than a roto molded kayak and it just allows you for a very comfortable platform to stand on and feel secure that you're not going to tip Come here, big girl. Oh, God, she don't want to go in the net. Oh, good gravy. So I just caught my personal best snakehead back here in shallow water um, around all these big pads. We saw a, a, a big fry ball, just started casting through it. Uh, and she was guarding them. Now I'm trying to get her out without her getting me. All right, so my personal best snakehead, six, almost seven pounds, up in these pads. So the shallow draft of this inflatable allowed me to get back in here and maneuver with ease and uh, yeah put me on a fish like this
It's a beautiful fish. I'm gonna go back in here into some thicker stuff, try to catch a bigger one. <laughs> These are fun. So we made it back here through this gigantic field of lotus. Uh, it was probably about, I'd say close to 200 yards straight through this. And some of it was as high as my head. Um, it, I've tried to go through this in a rotor molded kayak and, it, and it's, a, it's an absolute nightmare. I actually got into it one time and had to turn around and come back out. Uh, with this kayak and such a shallow draft, it, it, you're not fighting what's below the waterline and it just kind of parts the way for what you're going over and then what goes under the kayak, it doesn't have to go, it doesn't push it down as far. So it's much easier in an inflatable and to get through this, it's a little work, but we're back in an area where nobody else gets to. No boats can get back here. Um, we're at high tide right now, and this is what it looks like at high tide. So uh, we can push back through it to get back out of here and find another area. We finished back in that cove back there, uh, making a long run out to another, it's another creek is what it is. And we're going out along the main part of the bay got a 28 inch snakehead back there and an 18 and a quarter inch largemouth all the way in the back. So we had to get through that real thick stuff to get back in there, found some shade and some wood and uh, pulled the largemouth off of there. So we're going to run out here to something different and uh, see if we can't get on some more. So I'm pre-fishing for a tournament on the upper bay uh, while we're testing today and I'm just looking for specific structure, water depth, current, anything like that. I'm not necessarily looking for a pattern today, just seeing if there's fish in the area and, and what's in the area. That way when, when I come back for the tournament, I can make a plan for that day once I find the fish. Say I find them on wood, that way I know where all the wood is at. So I'm just taking mental notes to know where this stuff is at. And if I catch fish on it on tournament day, I know I can jump around from spot to spot and hit those high percentage areas. So on the Osprey, we've got, it, it's 14 foot long. Up front, we've got um, an anchor with a yak attack um, tie down eyelet on a switch pad and that allows the anchor to travel off the front and with this thing being an inflatable when you wind your anchor in it doesn't bang against the hole it doesn't make a bunch of noise or anything it's really quiet it won't scare the fish uh, moving back there's a handle there that also doubles as a paddle holder um, and then we've got the track there's eight foot of track going down each side of this kayak and then on the front We've got our Select Designs foot pedals. Uh, we've made some custom mounts here, trying it out, just seeing different heights and everything, getting it out on the water. And, and that's what getting it out on the water helps with, you know, how everything works, put a long day in, how do you feel at the end of the day, um, taking notes and then figuring out what needs to be changed or what can stay the same. Uh, the track is mounted to switch pads on the front and the back and then you can put tie down eyelets for your cordage. Uh, we've actually run the, uh, the spectra cord through the, the track itself, so it's hidden. There's no way to get tangled in your, your spectra cord for your steering lines. Uh, it, it goes in here and it comes out right here and goes to the motor. Uh, the seat mount, right now we've got a swivel seat on it. Uh, thinking about changing that to uh, just a, a, a rigid seat try to get something that might be a little more comfortable, a little bit more adjustable for those long days. The throttle is mounted over here on this side on the track along with the anchor wizard, which is right beside us in a vertical position. Um, there's a little bit of like storage area under the seat. I've got a, um, a tackle box here. My um, 
my catch board is here. I staged one or two rods in front and then I added the uh, Yak Attack rod holders, the uh, Omega rod holders here so that I can have the rods horizontal rather than vertical. But when we got into the thick stuff today, I had to put them in the vertical position so that they didn't get snagged, uh, lose baits or pull my rods off of the, off of the boat. So um, you've got a, a, a fairly good sized tank well um for through testing and stuff i think we're we're extending this just a little bit and then i've got two batteries sitting over here because we're putting in a lot of time and a lot of distance today really testing this thing out and then there's two sets of track there that run uh across the the tracks that run the length of the boat that hold the mount and then the torpedo 1103 on the back and then we just run our raise and raise cord and reverse lock the same way that you would through um, the, the Yak Attack tie down eyelets on a, on a normal kayak. So um, we've got some notes, we're gonna make a few adjustments, but for the most part, we're really happy with the way it is now. This is a fourth prototype, number five should be it. So once we get that fifth one in, we'll rig it, get out, test it, and then make sure that everything's good before they go into production. We got a fry ball of snakeheads here. I'm standing up and ripping a chatterbait through it to see if I can get one of the parents to come up and eat the chatterbait. That's how I caught the one this morning. We've got some heavy vegetation here too. Got up in this thick vegetation and I see all kinds of bait. So I was bringing this chatterbait in as high as I could in the water column and this guy come up and nailed it. Oh man, that's gonna be fun to get out of there too. I got him right in the roof of the mouth. No wonder it won't come out. Hey, little guy. Still fun. <laughs> so we're in the last hour or so of the tide going out and I mean, you can see the hydrilla is to the top. Um, we're in the back of this creek and the channel's right here and there's an open spot up there. I was casting up in to see if there was any fish hanging around that open water spot. Um, but this is the kind of stuff this boat's made for is to get up in here. I can stand up and paddle and look around, see if there's any snake hits sneaking around and see a fry ball or something, go follow them around. And Try to see if there's an adult protecting them. Looks like there might be another fry ball up there. Either that or just moving water. So, this is the second creek we're in today, and we've got. I think we got at least five miles to get back. It's a good ways. Um, I think we're just about slack tide right now, low. Uh, we'll have to paddle back out of this creek about halfway, and then we can get on the motor and get back. Um, then we'll get back out on the bay and then go back into the boat ramp when the tide's coming back in. So we're heading back. The wind's picked up a little bit is good it gives us a chance to test out how it handles the difference and the difference in water conditions so what we've got is an incoming tide and the wind is going the opposite way so we're blowing a lot of weight it's coming up over the front so we're gonna we're gonna take as much more of a bend a parabolic bend in the front and make it a little wider and that should help it stay on top a little bit better the water underneath instead of coming over the bow the way that it is. So, 
this is one of the things, one of the reasons why we get it out in these conditions so we can test it out and see how it handles.